It is an easy day right here on NTV today and this morning we'll be talking about content creation and alternatives to the young people, especially when it comes to the unemployment which is very high in this country. But we are also following up stories for you that are important and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected later today in Tanzania to meet President Magufuli on a private invite. Now we understand that uh, the president sent a private message to the president following the remarks of uh, Jago, that uh, the Starehe legislator concerning uh, the um, employment status and workforce in the country, generally about labor issues and the fact that uh, he has been uh, taken to court over incitement to violence. So the president will be headed to Tanzania later on. But first, he is expected at the Safaricom Sports Stadium, that's in Kasarani, where he'll be flagging off the Safari Rally, this year's edition of Safari Rally, and it also marks the return of Safari Rally's calendar after um, missing for some time. We also expect to join Kevin Mutai, who is in Mombasa. He will be speaking to a uh, number of residents and county assembly members concerning what's happening uh, in Taita Taveta, not only in Taita Taveta, the first time there was a possibility of dissolving a county assembly was in Makweni County. So we'll be putting that to perspective. We'll be joining him at around uh, 10.30. And uh, CS Masharia is before members of parliament. We'll find out what he's talking about later on. But first, just a look at some of the stories that we have for you. And... Uh, on our discussion this morning, we'll be talking about content creation, as I mentioned. East meets West is already here. Yo, my in Kanganya. East meets West. They're already here. I'll also be speaking to a senior manager at Saiton, and I'll be speaking to a vlogger who will be joining us in studio shortly. But first, let's take a look at some of the stories that made your headlines yesterday. And we begin with uh, the memorial for Bob Colimo, friends and family of the late Safaricom Chief Executive Bob Colimo offered a rare glimpse into his life at a service held in his memory at the All Saints Cathedral. Each speaker described him as a man who tight and chained the lives of those he interacted with. President Kenyatta, diplomats and other dignitaries were among those present. Our Leila Mohammed was there too and she now reports. Intimidate me to call him father. There was the laughter. <laughs> And even more. My one disappointment, I was supposed to have gone back to collect something that had been reserved for a special friend. The last act was a solemn ceremony. A few dignitaries, family and friends gathered in a collective sense of loss. But even in the moments of celebration... To the only man whom I loved. And desperately want to live forever. Bob's story was still penned with the ink of affliction. His widow struggling to break down the wall of emotion to celebrate and honor the memory of her husband, her reflections, a mirror of his own voice. A person's a person, no matter how small. And the thing is, you're never too small to make a difference in this world. In just two pages, a great man who lived in this country for less than a decade was celebrated in a picture gallery to a standing ovation and so many somber memories of him. The man who was at the helm of one of the country's most profitable organizations also made time for friends, a strong bond that even death will not sever. What a great example and lesson for all of us here today. The president, Colimo's broken promise to hang on to the company for another year still hurts. He will, however, not break his promise to take care of the family he leaves behind. Bob loved Safaricom as if it was his own, a part of his family. And Bob loved his wife and his children dearly. It was the final chapter of a story about a candle that never flickered, even in the wind. A man whose spirit remains immortalized in the world he left. Leila Mohammed, NTV.
Now, Faith Harrison Jerry, who until recently served in Waititu's government as chief of finance, now accuses his former boss, Kiambu Governor Ferdinand Waititu, of running the county of Kiambu like his own personal kiosk. Now, Faith testifies that Waititu has indeed awarded tenders to his family and proxies as the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission suspects him of doing. And those who those are not the only crimes she accuses him of committing. And if it's Oli Baru, with more of the Kiambu County fallout. This dramatic arrest then release followed this bold statement earlier in the day. I don't feel under threat and we are not fearing because we are talking the truth. And an explosive revelation that offers a glimpse into the state of Kiambu County affairs. Faith Harrison Jerry, who has served as the chief finance officer under Kiambu Governor Ferdinand Waititu, now accuses her boss of presiding over a corrupt and incompetent administration that has been milking the county dry. All the tenders are awarded to the family members, the wife, son, and the proxies, of which is not supposed to be so according to the law. She and five other county staff blamed the governor for meddling and running a one-man show. Waititu, only weeks earlier, was himself bundled into a waiting vehicle by the authorities and taken in for questioning over the suspected irregular award of tenders valued at 588 million to himself and his immediate family. <laughs> The EACC also listing fraudulent acquisition of public funds, conflict of interest and money laundering, all of which his former chief finance officer says he is guilty of. The tenders are being awarded to the MCAs in the county. This is to suppress uh, the independence of the assembly. She also claims the governor has transferred public property to private individuals, listing staff houses and quarries. If government does not move in with spin and save the Wanchiko of Kiabu, uh, we are likely to dissolve this county the way the Taita Taveta government is moving on. Because if all the public properties have been acquired and transferred to the private individuals, I don't see Kiambu uh, uh, surviving. When reached for comment, Waititu advised Faith Njeri to take her complaints to the EACC and not the media. <laughs> Olive Barrows, NTV. All right, now go to Mungu na Ujimoto. Now, two more revelations now. This time about guns in the wrong hands. The government says half of the elected political leaders in the country are among 4,000 gun holders who failed to submit the, to the vetting exercise. Now, these gun owners, some of whom cannot be traced, were given a week to register the weapons but are yet to comply. And as NTV Seth Olali now reports, the government says they will be declared armed and dangerous upon the expiry of the grace period, which is today. huge number of MPs, senators, governors, women representatives and MCAs will be declared armed and dangerous upon the expiry of a seven-day grace period extended to gun owners to submit their guns and licenses for vetting. The legislators are among 4,000 people who the Firearm Registrations Bureau says the licenses will be rendered illegal after failing to turn up for the mandatory vetting exercise at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations headquarters along Kiambu Road. Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi has ordered those with fake certificates to surrender their firearms to the nearest police stations, and those who will not comply will be forcefully disarmed by security agencies. 
eti wananchi wanazumbuka hivi tikuna watu ambao wanatushinda sisi wote kazi yao ni kupeleka ngombe hapa kuangaisha watu kuwa vijana wetu na mambo kama hayo haitawezekana na haitakuwa tena they will also be arrested and charged with unlawful possession of firearms a claim that attracts a punishment of seven years in prison. <laughs> Members of the public have occasionally complained of being harassed by a number of gun-wielding VIPs, such as members of parliament and businessmen. According to the new regulations, civilians who own firearms must be sufficiently trained in the use of small arms, have a certificate of clearance from the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, and be at least 21 years of age. They must also satisfy the Firearms Registration Bureau and the sub-county police commander that the nature of the business or occupation they are engaged in puts the life in danger. The entire process can take up to two months and cost 2,000 shillings. For the current vetting, however, gun holders must satisfy the Firearms Registration Bureau that they can use a gun efficiently through taking a test at a shooting range. Additionally, they must take a mental test carried out by an approved government doctor. The gun has to be subjected to a ballistic test and the DCI to ascertain that it has not been used in any crime. Prohibited firearms include automatic and semi-automatic self-loading military assault rifles such as G3s, AK-47s and M16 rifles. Seth Olale, NTV. Away from that, State House Digital Communication Director Dennis Itumbi now claims to have proof that a meeting that discussed the Deputy President's assassination indeed happened. It will be told the court he had audio and video recordings of the said meeting at the Lamada Hotel and as NTV Sailors Apollo reports, it will spend the next four days in custody to allow police more time to investigate. After close to 24 hours under the watch of police officers in cells, controversial blogger Dennis Itumbi was finally arraigned today. Itumbi is facing charges of forging the letter alleging the assassination of Deputy President William Ruto. And in solidarity with him today were MPs allied to the Deputy President. To him the prosecution believes that he was responsible for publishing the said letter. But he denies the claims and instead claims to have an audio and video recordings of the meeting that allegedly took place at the Lamada Hotel. I would want to play because it would assist the whole of this thing they are trying to investigate. The video of the meeting is because it would prove that a member of a member who works for my bosses has actually threatened the life of the deputy president. Itumbi claims he was told to admit to authoring and posting the letter when he was arrested Wednesday afternoon. The prosecution told the court that it intends to expand its investigations to a WhatsApp group consisting of governors, senators, MPs and other politicians allied to the deputy president and which they said later was forwarded to. Part of its investigations will include the summoning of the members of the group named Tanga Tanga. The prosecution had wanted it to be detained for 14 days, but his defense strongly objected, saying they had had enough time to tighten up the investigations. I order that the respondent be held at Mudaiga police station for five days to enable the completion of the investigations. Itumbi was arrested by detectives from the DCI after investigations narrowed down to two aides in the office of the deputy president said to have authored the letter. Silas Apollo, NTV. Now has the presidency lost or the president lost his grip on the presidency and the country? Going by the findings of an opinion poll conducted by InfoTrack, a number of Kenyans blame him for not steering the country in the right direction. From the executive that acts in isolation to parliament that is undermined by supremacy wars and a judiciary suffering under its own spell, the government is slowly degenerating into an organ on a perpetual war with itself and not even the cabinet under collective responsibility can sit and deliberate. Take a look at this report. 
The president's interaction with his deputy at today's function perhaps offers a glimpse into their relationship in private. In the past, the president has made statements that have left no doubt as to who the message was intended for. You can be my brother. You can be my sister. You can be my closest political ally. You can be <laughs> whatever you are. Sometimes they are not so explicit, but still they raise no doubt. By the way, you've just been given an offer of one. I have a couple more I'd like to donate to you. <laughs> At least for the next three years, give me peace. <laughs> The shoots of rebellion within his own house perhaps started to sprout after the handshake that the president hoped would give him peace and space to thrive, but instead caused fractures at the heart of power. What was once a cold war is now an all-out battle. The lines of division have also cut through the cabinet. Its members have openly picked sides. Reports of some cabinet secretaries avoiding cabinet meetings abound, even though the cabinet last sat weeks ago. Just last week, four members of the cabinet were accused of plotting against the DP, by far the most serious of allegations to grip the cabinet. And it's also intended to injure our reputation. To the extent that that government is dysfunctional, as we've said, we must tell the president that, uh, please, this is not it. And it's not just the cabinet suffering. The legislators, too, are squabbling. As early as last year, parliament was under the spell of the executive. In fact, renegade members of parliament were dealt with. They were either de-whipped or removed from key positions. There is nobody that we will allow to dictate to parliament in terms of how they will do their business, how they will run their programs. Parliament is an independent institution. The sibling rivalry, however, started during the 11th parliament. The Supreme Court had to intervene in a dispute between the National Assembly and the Senate on the division of revenue bill. This supremacy contest between the two houses of parliament now threatens to shut down county operations. The Senate has no powers to remove you from office. Tell these characters that we are beyond intimidation. For somebody to say that Senate is an idle institution, that kind of person did not take a proper oath. The judiciary that is also expected to mediate has also had its fair share of challenges. The Chief Justice is also under siege. If not from independent petitioners wanting him out, his own subordinates casting aspersions, the DCJ faces imminent prosecution following allegations of impropriety and abuse of office. One of the Supreme Court judges is under investigations by a tribunal. Countless more in the lower courts are under investigations. Yeah. Government is their own people. This government is going to punish you more than they will punish me. I'm telling you, in another one year. All this while the president remains unmoved, even as his own party faces an acrimonious split. Observers say only he wields the stick. He only needs to use it. Ken Mijungu, NTV. And it's not a secret that the state of unemployment in the country, and especially among the youth, nears tipping point. For these faces of the employment crisis, they hope for better, but fear the government has taken a tone-deaf approach to the plight. And to be Zainab Ismail with the despairing state of the youth. When Joseph Maina graduated from Kenyatta University with a bachelor's degree in accounting and finance in 2017, he was not fully prepared for the hostile job-seeking environment he was entering. For the whole day, like six hours a day, I spend my time looking for jobs. Like many young people, Joseph now joins the list of those who hope to fall upon a chance in the job market by advertising their state on social media, hoping to catch the eye of a potential employer. We meet this group of young men at Nairobi's industrial area. They are not sunbathing. They pensively wait here in the hope of landing casual work from the factories around here. Their frustration is unmistakable. They have been here since dawn, and by noon, there was no reprieve in sight. Hapa hivi si ukuja, tunategea, mtu anatoka huko, yuakali kiuwa na tuita, tunayenda, lakini tukikosa, tunakaa vilu metuona hivi. Tingawa tunakujanga wa subuhi, unakaa di jioni, hatu pati kazi. Sasa zingine labda matrela zikikuja, tunashukisha, unakaa hatu ujakula lunch. 
Last week, a multitude of young and unemployed Kenyans attended a job interview at a hotel in the capital where a recruitment agency had advertised for five vacant positions of waiters and waitresses. The response was overwhelming, even for the agency. The state of unemployment has driven thousands to the Middle East in search of better opportunities. And while some thrive, for many others it marks the start of a new journey of misery, having to endure cruelty and abuse in the hands of their employers. According to the latest findings released by research firm Infotruck, unemployment tops the list of concerns among Kenyans with the high cost of living and corruption featuring high up. Zainab Ismail, NTV. Right, it's a good entry point for our discussion this morning because there's so much unemployment and uh, the youth are looking for opportunities. Tragically, they don't even know where to look. However, we have a group of youth who have known where to look and they're not waiting to finish school and begin searching for employment. In fact, they tell me that they have activities that are income generating. I just wish I knew about this when I was a little younger. <laughs> But uh, they're here to share uh, what they know with you. And uh, one of the areas, they say the future is in the internet. The future is online. One of the areas that has been exploited and is being ex exploited seriously is uh, online. And uh, that's the reason why I have my guest this morning. Starting with uh, Maureen Muihia. Maureen Muihia is a vlogger. Is it a vlogger or vlogger? Vlogger. Vlogger. Yes. And uh, also that means you're... A online content creator yes. right mm -hmm. that i have um, a group here they call themselves east meets west you decided this morning i'm gonna bite my lips <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> they'll introduce themselves sasha dominic and bobby right and then we have daniel Manya. he's a senior manager technology brand innovation a site on invest, quite a title in a fit and a business card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we shot it. <laughs> shot it. As just a manager. It's TBI. Oh, oh, okay. No, no. Okay. <laughs> so thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming this morning. And uh, you know, you guys don't work full time. Do you work morning to evening? Okay, not you. The, the three. Do you? What time do you work? Um, uh, East, mid, <laughs> west. <laughs> what time do you work? Let's say Saturday. Saturday uh, from around um, 11 okay to probably around three or four three or four yeah. and that's enough for a week that's enough for a month for a month yeah. you yeah. have like how many recordings on um, one day we might shoot four to up to six videos in one setup really? we're dropping one video a week a week so, okay yeah okay okay great I'll be talking to you about what you do but let me begin with uh, Maureen Maureen um, wh what do you do what do you do in terms of content creation? Um, so I started YouTube five years ago, but it wasn't catching on, like no one was responding. So I did a, like a joke, like someone challenged me to do a YouTube video, a makeup YouTube video in my mother tongue. So I went ahead and I just shot one in my mother tongue because I guess I don't look like I speak my mother tongue. So um, it trended on Twitter. How long was it? I think it was like 20 minutes. I mean, I was just doing a what I do. for 20 minutes? Most yeah. of my videos are above 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I just, well, because my makeup takes an hour. Is that Oh, okay. <laughs> to the <laughs> okay. So I shortened it to 20 minutes. And mm -hmm. then, um, so it just caught on, trended on Twitter. Uh, and that's how it began? Well, no, mm -hmm. because I wanted to go back and do English. But then my followers, because it's more on Instagram, they were like, no, um, just keep, I asked her, like I did a poll, and they were like, we want to hear. Mother tongue. Yeah, so I just did, I just wake up and speak my mother tongue. I guess I'm funny. Okay. Yeah. Try, try it with us. <laughs> Say something in your mother tongue. No, you have to watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage me to watch the video by saying something. Do you see me? You have to watch the videos. Okay, you're going to do it anyway. You're going to do it before the end of the show. But you said something at the beginning that it was not catching up. What do yeah. you mean it wasn't catching up? Um, you have to find your niche. Yeah. Whatever you're doing on social media, you have to find your niche. I mean, of course, as human beings, we keep evolving. And you're going to find some of your followers who evolve with you. But you're also going to find those who are diehard fans. So I didn't have either. I didn't have a niche. I wasn't. There were already people doing makeup in English. 
Kenyans doing English, whatever. Um, so I wasn't just, I just hadn't found my, my mid ground. I tried to do hair. I had natural hair, like really long dreadlocks then. I tried to do that, but then I cut them. So that, that moved, it shifted. So you have to find your niche. And I guess my niche now is just doing what I love, but doing it in my mother tongue. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I can imagine um, guys, how hard is to describe makeup in her mother tongue? <laughs> I can do it. Okay, so I was with my cousin and she was like, I, I called her. I was like, what is foundation? Uh -huh. And foundation is like when you're putting down a house and she's like, Now we understand. Now we understand. Yeah, how like I just embraced it. Yes. For okay, eyeshadow, eyeshadow, yes. Yeah, I just did direct translation. Uh -huh. I said, <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, yeah, exactly. Do you uh -huh. see? So, I don't. I guess I don't look like I speak it. No, yeah, no, you so, don't. Yeah. No, you don't. All right, let, let's talk about it, East Meets West. Who's yeah. going to speak for your group? Because I want to know how you began the group. All right, go ahead. Bob. Um, So, probably around um, 2017, I had to drop out of school because of some financial issues. So while I was um, in the house seated all alone, um, those are the times when you caved in, depression comes in, you're thinking and you're trying to figure out what you could make out of your school. Because you see, the system teaches us 844. So what if the four at university doesn't work? You see, okay. they don't tell us what a fallout do plan. 12 that yeah. you have accumulated. You there. see, so because we've trusted the system so much that we are brainwashed to think that after this, immediately after you're four, you're going to get a job, which is not the case. So as I was there, I used to watch a lot of YouTube because funny enough, my parents, uh, we, we have a television, but my parents pay for Wi-Fi and it's not a digital television. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's just there. Yeah. It's just there the to show. Yeah, it's just there. Wageni wakikuja waone. Eh, oh, na TV. Tusikai ni kama tuna. So most times I used to um, check a lot of online content and that's when um, I was like, this is really good space to start East meets West. So the name just came because I'm from Eastlands um, and Dominic was from Westlands at the time. Mm -hmm. So we were supposed to start me and him. So it's East meets West. Mimi sasa ni mwenye shenji aza Eastlands. Yeah, yeah, Zobabi. Yeah, but then we later on, <laughs> we later on learned that just being the two of us wouldn't be fun because okay. all about campus, when you're in campus, it's all about your squad, your group. So we invited um, people who we shared common. All of us, are, most of us are from different tribes. And uh, we were like seven members. Now we are seven members. And we just decided to talk about issues that affect millennials, issues that affect people our age and be authentic and real as possible. And Are you smiling because you think I don't understand? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so then um, we didn't actually think it'll blow up as fast as it did because as she said, the, the space on YouTube is different than um, on Instagram or other because when most Kenyans think when the subscribe button is written subscribe, people think they actually pay to subscribe. And then plus most people know that more uh, you'll use more bundles on YouTube compared to using it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I didn't so that's know that. why it's really hard to do YouTube. Uh, but now in August we're going to be two, um, 20,000 subscribers later, and it catches up because it's much more of a campus setup, and it's how we grew is a friend tell a friend and one person posts us on their social media. Then we have like our last video, more than 50 people had posted us. So we get new people coming in um, to doing more than 10 to 15,000 views in one day. Okay. Yeah. So there was a necessity that you needed to address. Yeah. That's how you came up with that. Yeah. Um, Sasha, about the group, how did you join the group? Um, Bobby and I have been friends for over 10 years. Okay. So we schooled together at Jerry University. He, had, he just approached me and told me, um, I'm, ha I'm creating a YouTube channel and I think you should join. Come in as a girl. Before it was just boys. Come mm -hmm. in as the first girl and we'll make a video and you just react to it. So I reacted on that one video and that's how I ended up staying two years later. Okay. Yes. Okay. Dominic? Yeah. Uh -huh. You are the West, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, I'm the West. <laughs> You're the West. <laughs> um, 
Um, for me, basically, um, sincerely speaking, actually joining East Meets West was, was interesting because when I first met Bobby, Bobby didn't like me. Um, we actually were never friends. These guys knew each other. Um, guys from the channel, we didn't know each other. Um, Bobby thought I was um, a rich kid from there. You know, I, I, Bobby's a perceived uh, which is not the case. So from there, that's when I, I joined the Smith's West and um, it, we just became really close um, okay. on a day-to-day -day basis. Actually, every day, the way you see us is the way we are. That's why you, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Me too, the way you see me. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? I'm alone on the chat. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> okay, necessity. Yes. Translated into an idea. Yes. I want to talk much about that, but necessity. At what point do you realize that there's a necessity to be addressed as a young person? Is it when you're home like Bobby? Is it when you want some little money, extra money in your pocket? Is it when your parent is giving you 10,000 shillings and you need 50? At what point? I think necessity, you start by the basic requirements. You know, you need shelter, you need food, you need housing. Mm -hmm. And as, as a young guy, if these are not met automatically, there is a gap that you need to fill. And in most cases, it's always financial. You know, for you to be able to have a house, you need to pay rent, so you need money. If you need food, you need to buy it, so you need to get some way of raising that financial. So it's, I would say a, a, a lot of it is around the basic needs that really then give you that moment of now I need to really get my life together and figure out how I can make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And again, as you put it, um, the fastest route right now is internet. So internet. figuring out what is that small thing that you can do. And there's a myriad of it. They've talked about content. She's uh, interestingly from a business perspective. And when she talked about audience is very key because even for us to sell our products, you need to understand how do you put your content to attract to that audience. And for her it was, let me speak Kikuyu to my people and tell them how makeup is done. Because now when you, when you speak to your audience in a manner that they don't understand, you don't get followers. Mm -hmm. and that's, you know, basically it's normal. you really it's need, normal. To, yes. you need to tweak it quickly mm -hmm. to figure out. And then from a business perspective, now if I was in the makeup business, I would automatically run to and tell, hey, by the way, I'm launching a new product. Would you want to? So that's how then you extend revenue to her. Okay. Because she's built that platform and she has an audience. But to me, she sounds more of a risk taker because the person who applies makeup speaks her English, not her language, right? No, they don't. Really? No. Tell me about it. Okay, you see, there's this thing about, um, there's a, a facade about accents going on in Kenya. So if you speak to them, like the way, which is how I went to I went to school and and this is how we spoke because I went I, I even went to uni in the states, so I'm not pretending. But when you speak to people like this and this, they think you're they think you're Bush. yeah they think you're they think you're hypocritical. You're not really addressing them because they see you as better than them when you're really not. You're just being yourself. But when you speak to them like with an accent or however you speak, it's they not, accept it, you. If you, yeah, if you speak to them one on one, they accept you because now you're not better than them. You're on their level. You're one of them, mm. and and unless I think you're one of me, I can't relate to you. Yep. And that's why women have an issue with other women. It's not that if if you see me walk in, it's not that I said anything or did anything. It's because you think I'm better than you. It's your perception of me. So if I try to show that you know what we're all the same then that's that's a crowd pleaser either okay. way even if i'm still better than you yeah i'd like to talk about the business aspect of these guys because this they have turned this into business but first i i like to know how difficult she's told us how difficult it was for her at the beginning was it any different or difficult for you when you began yeah, it is because um as a group you have the perception where all of you have your own following so you feel like at once all of you will come with that following but i remember the first um like the first video we went to do 300 views in a day and for us that was really a bit depressing because we had at that moment we were actually 12. so if you do 300 by 12 
the number you get is m everyone just brought 30 people and that time we've shared on whatsapp Check groups mm -hmm. on our instagram some of us have more than 5000 followers on different platforms but the number that came back to watch us was very minimal and that was at first now learning the patience because it actually takes a lot of patience to get your footing get your niche and also um because we are young we got so much backlash in, in the sense that um, the older generation, I guess, the people who don't understand millennials. You're smiling again. You, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, I said your generation would sit down and view us and be like, these guys are too childish. Mm -hmm. What are they saying? They don't know anything about love, as if love has an age. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have age. Actually, it does. Okay. <laughs> you see now, that's what you're saying. So coming up with content at times became so difficult because trying to reach a very large audience but the audience is much restricted to people who relate to us and mostly our age okay okay which is a good thing because you have a lot of people also within yeah. your age yeah. that are interested and it goes back to what you were saying you know why are you the one doing it you know that's the question yeah. mm. your school for example will ask you fellow students why them mm. why them why should i support them mm. you know because i'm sure 300 is much less than the student population mm -hmm. at riara yeah, right yeah. Yeah. okay so what do you bring to the group personally sasha what do you bring to the group? the humor the content you know there's a stupid person <laughs> in the group then there's a clever person <laughs> then there's a content generator then there's a thinker of the group right so what do you bring to the group i'm just the one who comes who has the clap box when someone oh talks, really yeah dominic uh, uh, we'll try that <laughs> dominic experienced that a while back and <laughs> <laughs> so most people um in our channel they see me as a, okay they make fun of me so much so they do that and they retaliate and straight on which is mm. straight on worse than how they came but really yeah. <laughs> really okay so that's what you bring in the group yeah. and i bet there are people who are just watching your video for that okay yeah, yeah i can mm -hmm. testify oh you can testify <laughs> yeah there's one club back she did and well wow. uh, which one was that i said i mentioned her forehead uh-huh because okay yeah, yeah okay yeah <laughs> and it was a joke little did i know uh -huh. she had been cooking it up and cooking it up and when she smacked, I literally had to walk out of the room. Like it was like, whoa. Uh -huh. And then was it, it rehearsed? It, it was trending. Was it rehearsed? No. You know, we never, oh, we never, we never ever plan our script. content ever. Okay. We never sit down. What we'll do is we'll come on set and just feel mm -hmm. whatever feels like we want to talk about will come out. We we'll never plan our content. So that day we just sat down. We needed, and she clapped back and. It was trending. There were vines all over. Okay. And it was it was it was a, it was a big one. And that's what you like, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what you like to see when it's trending, when people are watching. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How how do you start? Because it's difficult to start. I'll relate this with business. Everyone says you need to do your business. You need to begin. You need to do this. You need to have your own business as you do this. Do this on the side. But it's so difficult to start. Uh. Can I look at it on the other side because uh, we have this analogy that for you to do anything you need to have these big pockets and you know that you need to have these loads of money for you to be able to start. You have a phone, you, know, you have a smartphone and now there are several tools, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, they, they are free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today you just, and for something to trend you don't necessarily need a very expensive phone, mm -hmm. you just need to be, uh, be good at what you do and what you're going to say and just take take that camera put it on your face and take it take it out post it somewhere mm -hmm. and people start watching Sharing people start it. watching yeah. you start generating um, um, uh, an audience but the key thing of course is you always have to understand topic first of all what is it that you want to play into there's this makeup uh, i'm not sure uh, what they several they yeah. talk about anything yeah. Yeah. talk about anything. literally yeah. anything that they come up no, then there are those people who will focus on maybe financial topics i mm. want to address a certain issue around finance and i'll check my phone and you know today let me talk about where we can get money to start a business and it attracts an audience and from there i start getting ideas on what's the next thing because when people start commenting you get an idea oh by the way um, so and so asked this question maybe it's a good topic to start next time so that's how you just build on it pole pole build okay. on it pole pole and people begin to trust and you people begin to trust you okay. you start bringing in fresh content fresh content you get a few money here you buy a good camera you start shooting mm. clear videos again pole pole like that and that's how you build most of I, I have like 40 channels that I've subscribed 
Yes. Aside from news, there's entertainment, there's yeah. comedy, Trevor Noah. Okay. I have done that a lot, and I'm going to try yours. I don't speak Kikuyu, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's not but only I makeup, though. It's uh -huh. not, I do it, everything. It's, it's lifestyle. Lifestyle. The first one was a makeup. Makeup. Oh, that's what yeah. introduced you to us. Yes. All right. Yeah. I'm going to look at it and get a translator. <laughs> right? They're bo it's both. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's fun. But mm -hmm. I think I'm fun. Well, I'm fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That confidence, that confidence. So... I want to talk about memes. Memes. Yes. <laughs> you guys are fun? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you think about the people who develop those things? I like to pick your mind. What do you think? Because some, this is a topic that is trending in the country and mm -hmm. suddenly someone just puts <laughs> a small twist to it <laughs> and it's trending the whole day. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. First of all, we want to thank those guys. You want to thank we them? We want to thank them. Okay. Because those guys are the ones who incorporate many of our videos. This means to us, like we have so many memes that we normally use and meaning like funny videos that we use. But um, I think for them, I think normally just on standby. <laughs> they just wait. They're just waiting. Okay. Like this, this, we normally assume these guys are just on a computer somewhere. <laughs> and then when something cracks, it's like boom. Pick this guy's face, do a bit of photo Photoshop and the meme is trending. And, and also the, the, um, the digital space is very competitive. Yeah. So it's about who can make more people laugh compared to the other person because mm. everyone like right now she can even tell you there are other youtubers on the come up there are other um content creators coming so you have to make sure that your content is keeping people on its toes so when they're creating memes they have to make sure that at the end of the day i have to make sure my meme is because they're like 10 meme pages mm -hmm. so it's like a battle because it's now the 10 main pages more than 10 more, more than, than 10, 10. Yeah, more than 10. So many. So many. please yeah. give me yeah. the details <laughs> <before> <laughs> you leave. So there's so many pages so it, at the end of the day it's who's bringing the more audience fun. Yes. to them yeah, so that's why yeah. okay um the creative industry how difficult is it to penetrate right um because this is creative how difficult is it it's not nothing is difficult if you love it enough if you're willing to put in the work nothing is Nothing is out of reach, I don't think. You just have to love it enough, and it's blood, sweat, and tears. You have to put in the work. You can't also just say, I love it, so it's going to be easy to break into. It's, everything's, everything is difficult, but if you love it enough, if you're passionate enough, okay. if you're authentic enough, if you're just willing to do the work, you're just going to break through. Either you, way. you sound like there's no particular point in your journey that you said, you know what, I'm not going to do it anymore. No, I did. I said I started five years ago, and I just trended in February. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I stopped. I stopped for, I think, I, I stopped for four years because I was like, you know what? This, because some, well, you know, the problem is you look at someone else's journey. Mm -hmm. And, you, and you, you want it to be you your think, own. Yeah, you think, you know what? I can, I can do this. And you can, but they put in work. They put in. It's... Like the, the person I look up to on YouTube has been doing this for 10 years, for a decade. And I started when she started. If I had kept up, I would be where she is right now, earning and calling the shots, but I didn't keep up. But we, we were on the same uprise when we started, but I gave up. What he said about patience, that's key for anything, even for a business. But yeah, you do stop, you do give up, but if you love it enough, you come back and you just keep improving. And um, what is it called? Just uh, like bringing up new ideas and just refreshing, refreshing everything. Okay. So for you guys, how difficult has it been? Um, group dynamics, as everyone knows, is, is it's kind of easy because now, um, remember, everyone has a personality in the group. So it's learning how to cope with everyone's personality for no one to feel less and no one to feel more. Because as we said, every, every week in every episode, the f we get om more than 500 comments. So you can imagine 500 comments, today it's gonna be about Dominic. So how am I gonna feel appreciated and feel content as being part of the member? Because you see, um, one of our member, it actually took recently, he's been in the group for two years, but the whole time, no one used to mention him in the comments. Until two, e two weeks back, when everyone now started saying, Oh, Ray, Ray, this guy is killing us, you see. So also understanding that and also not allowing it to get to your head because now you're getting attention. You see, for some of us, um, the, the lifestyle, it's kind of good because now you get free tickets for to go to events. Um, you're being treated well. 
So if you also allow it to get into your head, you're like, nah, I'm the star in the group. I'm, I'm Beyonce. So once that, that, that happens, um, it's, it's always, that's where the group, because one, if one person leaves, then I feel like it's not the same anymore because we started it together, so we should all end it together. Not one person to start and go their separate ways. Okay, yeah. okay, group dynamics. Sasha? Yeah, okay, I can say that. And also when it comes to getting deals, sometimes it's a bit difficult because other people, you tell uh, a company, you guys are seven. Mm. And they start thinking, seven mm. people, they have to pay seven I mean, people money. Pay. Yeah. money. As opposed to someone telling you, okay, I'm alone in my channel, and you, you, they tend to pick the people who are alone. But at the same time, if we bring something different to the table, and if they refuse to take us, or they say we only want two people from the group, then that deal is over because we're not two, we're seven. So it's a, it was a bit challenging, but we worked our way through it. Okay, and now you're managing your perspective mm. of uh, yeah. the group, yes. Uh, for <coughs> me, I think the biggest challenge for us as a group has been also um, like hate and negativity. Hate online? Oh, oh. yeah. Or yeah. offline? Yeah. Hey. Both. Oh. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Like you okay. meet. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> you meet some people. Um, we've been a, out in public. Um, someone comes to you, says something nasty, walks away. Um, really? So they do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On your face? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Come say something nasty. Some will go online, type. Some will send it to you on your DM. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do, man. At the end of the day, you, you know, even us, we understand that every single individual who watches us is entitled to their own opinion, mm -hmm. right? We can't force our content on you. But all we can do is show you love regardless of whether you support us or not. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we do this as a passion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. You do it as a passion, but you also do it as a business. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to talk about earning from what you do, if it's sufficient, if it's encouraging enough for someone who just wants to venture, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, just briefly before I go to Sean, if, if you listen to them, yeah. they, they to, all right, I'm told I have to speak to Sean Sorry. because he's on standby with the PS, but uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected uh, to um, flag off this, this year's safari rally at the Safaricom Stadium that's in Kasarani and Sean Kadovilis will be in that function and uh, he's also, he loves safari rally. Sean, good morning, good to see you. Um, we understand the president should be coming your way shortly. Tell us about it. From the Kasarani Stadium. It is the scene of the start of the Safari Rally. And this is very important because it is a candidate event for the 2020 World Rally Championship. And I've got uh, with me uh, the defending champions here, uh, Carl Flash Tundo and Tim Jessup. Uh, Flash, uh, first of all, uh, how was the recce for you? Yeah, it's good. They've changed it up a bit and the roads were all marked really nicely. Um, it'll be a fun event. It's uh, Half of the sections will be not good for us in an Evo, but the other half maybe we can uh, make it up. So it'll hopefully keep a tight, you know, tight pack at the top. A lot of preparations done, a lot of grading. Uh, they spent months and months. Uh, have you noticed a difference in the wrecking? I hear also uh, signposting and things like that, uh, just to bring it up to international standards. Yeah, as I said, it was all really well marked. All the corners sort of uh, marked 100 meters before every corner and junction and... Uh, made navigators life easy a lot of promises made before about the safari rally and there's been disappointments for the drivers and other stakeholders in terms of preparations but with the government involved uh, have you noticed a noticeable change this time yeah i've seen a lot more people out uh, marshals volunteers and thanks to all of them and uh, let's put on a great show and uh, impress the fia delegates that are here hopefully they're already fairly impressed but uh, yeah we need that event next year you were just in Zambia just a few weeks ago. Uh, a very quick turnaround uh, in terms of getting the car prepared. Uh, how hectic was it for your team? It wasn't too uh, uh, that bad. We didn't have too many uh, issues. We'd already pre-ordered the, the parts that we felt we needed before the, got, the car got here. We've done a, a mapping on the engine, and apart from that, she's, she's uh, good to go. All right, thank you very much, uh, Carl Flash Tundo. Best of luck. Uh, we've got his navigator, Tim Jessup, here. Uh, Tim, in terms of navigation and all, uh, how was the recce? Uh, it was really good. Um, so, Sambu, they've changed up the route slightly. Uh, the marshalling and the signaging uh, is just awesome. So, very, very well done. 
I, I hear the routes have changed a little bit uh, from the last couple of years. Uh, have you noticed? Uh, can you tell us about some of the changes? Yeah, Kedong, uh, we found a few little bits that join up the, some of the old ro routes. Um, and it makes it a lot more fun. We've got a couple of new stages, uh, Malewa and Loldia, and that's really good fun, that's slippy. So we, we're praying for the rain gods. Some fast sections, uh, some tricky sections as well. Uh, you're driving the Evo 10. Uh, how is it suited to the car, uh, do you think, compared to last year? I think, like Flash said, it's a 50-50. Uh, half the route is um, good for us and half of the route isn't. So we just have to go with it. Everyone's in the same boat. And, uh, yeah, we've always done well in safari, so hopefully it continues. Okay, uh, finally, in terms of wildlife as well, uh, that could be a factor? Uh, very much so. Uh, there's thousands of zebras on the route, uh, a lot of uh, game. So we're just going to have to respect the ranch, slow down, let them pass. All right, uh, thanks very much. The best of luck. Uh, Tim Jessup, who's navigating Carl Flash Tindo. Uh, so that's what's happening. Uh, we're just trying to see if we can find uh, the WRC promoter, uh, we did have him here, uh, Oliver Siesler. Uh, he's not around, but just to let you know, as we try and see if we can get uh, one or two other people as well, uh, just to let you know what's happening, uh, the president's coming in a few minutes' time. Uh, he's going to be, of course, uh, flagging off the event. Then after that, we'll have the super special stage, and then we will take it from there. Uh, the super special stage is just around uh, Kasarani, just outside of Kasarani, and then we will take it from there. Uh, there'll be There's 48... Uh, entrance in this as well 48 cars who are taking part uh, led by Manvir Barian who's the double Africa champion uh, he will be starting off first and then we've got a number of uh, people as well uh, Carl Flash Tunde as we just spoke to is the joint record holder uh, holding the uh, Safari Rally title uh, five times with Tim Jessup and then of course we've got Boldev Chaga the double Safari Rally champion and of course Ian Duncan um, a lot of eyes on him. He's competing in the Evo 10. Uh, he's the only driver currently to have won the Safari Rally as a World Ch Rally Championship event, and that was back in 1994. So it promises to be really exciting. A lot of drivers from Uganda, uh, Tanzania, and then as far down as Zambia. And then we got a number of ones uh, from the UK as well, uh, from Europe as well, including the UK. So it all gets underway from 11 o'clock when the president flags off the event. Uh, back to you in the studio, Ken. Uh, Sean Carter, Villasek. Casarani. All right, Sean, thanks very much. And I'm wondering if you blew Subaris on the race too. Are you, are you also driving? <laughs> no, let me just stick to the media for now. All right. I know you love, you love Safari Rally so much. And uh, obviously the head of presidential delivery unit is taking a break from work. And yes, why? he is. Uh, he's actually competing uh, with somebody you may know, uh, Love and Cliff on Serio. Of course, uh, remember him. Yes. Uh, he was our business correspondent and, of course, used to present business news on NTV. He's now working at State House. And, yes, he will be competing. Uh, so good of the, uh, the uh, person in charge of the presidential delivery to also be rallying as well. Uh, looking forward to that. A number of other people competing as well. Uh, Eric Bengi, along with Tuta Miyoki, uh, Tuta Miyoki was named the Motorsports Personality of the Year. Uh, they will be starting off ninth in the rally. Uh, so a number of people competing, but also to let you know that uh, manufacturers are here. I can see uh, just nearby, uh, we've got representatives from the four manufacturers competing in the World Rally Championship. Okay. Uh, Hyundai, M Sport Ford, Toyota, and uh, Renault as well. Sorry, not Renault, Citroen. Uh, are competing uh, in the World Rally Championship. They've got representatives here. Uh, just to take notes, uh, to find out how the route is, uh, to speak to various people. We see them speaking to some of the local drivers as well. Great. And of course, all this is preparation for 2020. Should we get back into the World Rally Championship? And I understand that this is just between you and me, Ken. There is a meeting early next week uh, to ratify whether the Safari and Japan will be on the World Rally Championship calendar come 2020. So we'll find out early next week the fate of the Safari Rally. But all lies on Kenya, and it all gets underway from 11 o'clock with the flagging off of the first car by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Back all to right. you in the studio. All right. And you just gave it away, Sean. It's not between you and me anymore. Everyone knows about it. Thank you very much. I just make sure you tell... Nzio Kawaita has to lead from the front. Uh, Sean Kadavelis at uh, Kasarani. We're coming back with a discussion here about content creation. So stay with us. We'll be right back.
Bobby Ward, Dominic and Sasha, they are a member of a group known as East Meets West. If you don't know about it, go to YouTube and you meet them there. And of course I have Daniel Mainya who is from uh, Saiton. It's a very long title. <laughs> he has a big title, just, just, which basically just, means <laughs> <laughs> technology. <laughs> All right, and we spoke to Sean Carvillis earlier. He's still at uh, the Kasarani president. The president is expected shortly. And um, if you follow history, today is the 50th um, anniversary. We're celebrating 50 years since the demise or the killing of Tom Boyer. So the celebrations are all over. There are activities lined up to mark that day, and we are reporting on that. Also, we have a reporter, Stacy, who is on standby. We'll be speaking to her shortly to tell us what people think. Do, even, do they even know about the monument? Actually, guys, I should ask you to banter on Tom Boyer, but that's a little difficult. <laughs> so I'll not ask you to do that. But we're going to go to Stacy shortly. But um, ladies and gentlemen, they have translated this idea to business now, right? Yes, yes. And uh, I want to discuss now the business aspect of their idea. Yeah. So one, they told me it's passion. Yes. So to me, it's more about money than passion because Bobby told us his story, right? Mm -hmm. I was sitting at home. So which one comes first? You realize I can make money and then you develop your passion um, out of making money or you realize this is my passion, let me make money out of my passion. Or did I make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I think they, they are not separate, if, 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 if I might give my thoughts. They are not separate. They actually have to go along together. Because, you see, creativity, you, you can't teach it. You can't like, say that I've gone to school on creativity and now I understand it. It really, it's a personal initiative. It's something that uh, you just have to build over, over time. So if it is making people laugh, it's, you know, it's something that you develop over time. Now, making money on the other side is, uh, I think it's as a result of this passion. Because when you start it off, in most cases, I'm sure even for you guys was, not that when you started it off, you expected that immediately it's going to pay out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know it's going to pay out, but you really have to do the hard work here mm -hmm. out of that passion to be able to hit that business sense. Because if you look at it, it's, even for us from a business perspective, of course I would approach somebody who has like uh, 1,000 view to be able to you know, market my product. Mm -hmm. Of course you go and look for the guy who's really creating, becoming viral and people are following them. That's the, and, and, and who is related to your conversation. So most of these guys, for you to be able to do that, you really have to have that passion to drive the numbers before then you can say now I have business, okay. a business case. Okay, so you, you build your audience, you, you have audience. A, a sizable audience, then the corporation start approaching them. They start All right, so uh, Maureen, at what point did you start making money? I know you started trending in Feb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, at what point? Um, Even before you began trending, that is? No, before mm -hmm. I began trending, you can't, I don't think you can make money before you begin trending. No one knows about you. Why should I care about you? But now if you're in my face, then I, maybe after, right after that, I think I started being approached by different companies. Oh yeah, no, before Feb actually, because there's a company that um, as, as sells land and it thought I would do good with my Kikuyu. So that was a, that was a, that was nice money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, when did you start making money? Um, I think six months in. Um, six months in, 2017. Yeah, I think, okay. Yeah. Um, because I think the first deal we got was uh, Samsung. Big shout out to them. Um, they were launching new phones, and they needed a squad, a group of friends to advocate for the phone and be like the face of that new type of phone. So that was one of the biggest, um, that was, a, for us, that was the biggest um, company we had worked with. And um, later on, uh, we started noticing, we got to do Hangouts, where mm -hmm. we would invite our subscribers to come and hang out with us. We happened to work with Big Square on that. So after doing the first one, it ended up going very well, because we pulled a number of about 200 people and the next one, the numbers went to about 300 people uh, just from that. So once you pull the crowd, now that's when people start noticing they could use you. 
Okay. Yeah. I'd like to speak to you how you divide the money. Is it based on um, <laughs> who brings what? Yeah. Uh, or it's, uh, we all did this together and I'd like to talk about that. But first, as I mentioned, today we mark the 50th uh, year since the assassination of Thomas Tom Joseph Mboya. And uh, Stacey Nguyenar is outside um, the Nation Center at uh, Tom Boyer Street where there is a statue for Tom Boyer. And, that place is very famous for Gormahia fans, but Stacey is there to speak to some people just to let them understand or make them know what really is happening and see if they really know what the 50th anniversary is. So Stacey, have you spoken to a few people and do they even understand, do, do they even know that today marks the 50th year since the death of Tom Boyer? Thank you, Ken. We are here at Tom Boyer Street and we are uh, going to speak to one or two. We are going to speak to one or two people who will be able to tell us what the statue means to them and if they even do remember what Tomboya signifies in this country. Um, we are standing about 50 meters from when he was assassinated in 1969. Uh, and I'm just going to get uh, Dinji's views on what he understands by the statue. Dinji, please come and talk to me. Um, so Dinji, when you see the statue and you pass uh, this street every day, what does it mean to you? Um, I feel encouraged to stand for what I believe in regardless of how the system is or how my surrounding is because um, I know Tom Boya stood for the rights of so many Kenyans and he, he worked so hard and um, I think you can't talk about the history of this nation without putting Tom Boya in his place. So I feel encouraged to just keep on pushing and to beat the system and yeah, just be me. And what do you remember Tom Boya for? When you hear Tom Boya, what comes to your mind? Um, honestly, not, not much, but I know he was assassinated and uh, well, his assassination was because of him doing the right thing and standing for the rights of so many Kenyans and of so many people. And um, I think had he not done what he did, we, we most probably would not be enjoying what um, the fruits that we do today. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Those are some of the sentiments here at Tomboya Street. Uh, the, the statue was also designed by Osho Toe uh, Ondula. And interesting, inter sorry, interestingly enough, the statue points to the exact place where he was shot. And um, it's very interesting to note also that the pharmacy has now since changed to a bookshop, uh, just 50 meters, like I said, from where we are standing here at Tomboya Street. Quite some history there of Tomboya, and it's been 50 years. And uh, I didn't know that uh, Tomboya, the statue is actually pointing to where he was shot. That's, that's what I've just learned, and that's part of my learning this morning, that he's actually pointing, and that the bookshop, it was, a, it was a chemist, right? Do you guys even know that? No. You don't? <laughs> do you know Tom Boyer? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, how do you know him? Well, he's your name. <laughs> you know history? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and it was labor movement, so it's a good thing to remember him 50 years old, and there's a lot of things that are lined up to commemorate that day. Let me come back to business. What makes sense to you people? So, um... How do, you, how do you share the money? Um, the group is seven, right? Yeah. Yes. So f first and foremost, um, what we, we have some certain things that we want. For instance, saving up for equipment. So the first thing that we do is um, the money has to go first in funding our equipment. Okay. Because at the moment we're using school equipment. And now most of us are finishing. Most of us are done. I'm done. The rest are clearing out by the end of the year. So now we need to start thinking of an exit strategy. That's now getting our first, getting our equipment. Then after that, we normally have, um, now from the money, we cut a little cost for allowances. So let's say if you get a deal, um, we'll go out, celebrate. Um, now we'll just use that. And then finally, as um, what we decided on as a group, um, we thought of this as a long-term thing. So. For us is even when the money comes we want to start businesses that would bring much more just than rather than dividing you, you the whole diversify you yeah. Yeah. that's what Saiton will tell you yeah yeah so <laughs> instead of just looking at it as getting money um clearing the money uh, we're just thinking about five ten years from this what would we say we came out from this youtube space with so okay. we're trying to start our own businesses so that at the end of the day um me being the founder, my my greatest achievement would see everyone being catered for by the group and everyone living comfortably from the money we are making. So okay. that's how we will see it. 
What is the biggest paycheck, Sasha, you've ever earned from this? <laughs> it's not a trick question. <laughs> what is the biggest paycheck? I can't even put it towards none. Really? Because we're all perceiving it. No, no, just how much? Because someone needs to understand. Probably you paid peanuts and we think. We're thinking you paid a lot of money. Would you, would six okay. figures. Six, six figures. Yes, yes, oh, actually. great. Mm -hmm. I should be your friend. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest paycheck? Yes. Yeah, six six paycheck. figures. Yeah. Company endorsements and all. Yes. Yes. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging. Okay, so um, how, looking at them, they're really young people, right? And uh, you'd really want to think futuristic, not right now. W what would you advise them? Uh, I actually will pick up on his point. He was talking my language. Cause yeah. <laughs> Some of these things, new people are coming in, therefore you, you start losing some audience to the new guy, the fresh yeah. guy in the market. So you, because again, at a certain point, you also can't keep up with a lot of the ideas that are coming out in the market. You have to think about diversifying, going into different, different other things. And I think as a young guy, the first thing is, of course, when you are at the peak of it and you're earning it, invest. Because mm -hmm. then the day, all these other dries up, you still have a pot somewhere and somewhere and somewhere. So you don't necessarily uh, put all your eggs in one basket. You know, this, this is just my way of generating income so that I can put in something that can sustain me long, long after long this comes through. Okay. So I would, I would really support the idea that really as you earn it right now, as you're getting the six-figure paychecks. Mm -hmm. When it's really, still guaranteed. When it's when still, still funnier than the next person. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put it yeah, sure. put it on to something else. Because at a certain point, you will retire. You, you'll need it. Of, you'll yeah. get out of this. Dominic, you want to say something? Uh, um, uh, no. <laughs> but um, I think the thing I can say for us is we, even when Bobby found, I think he can, he, he maybe forgot to say this, is his mistress doesn't end with us. Mm -hmm. Like, we f yes, he founded it and we're the original members, but we realized we're getting older. And it could also be a space <laughs> in the future. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm also not going to say yes. anything. <laughs> what I'm trying to drive yes. to is that we want it to be a generational thing. Okay. Yeah. East meets West is a movement. It's, it made, it you had that? A it's, movement. It's a movement. Maybe it's, it's, yes, so we are the carriers of the movement now. Mm -hmm. But in the next 20 years, there should be other people in our shoes. Okay. Yeah. 20 years, you still be under 40. <laughs> and now, and now, it's, it's actually true because the, yeah. the, from our name, okay. East meets West, it means elevation. Sure. So elevation in the sense that East in Kenya is seen kwa masafara. Okay. West is from the Barbies. Okay. So your the East, the safaras are meeting the West. west. So what's that? That's elevation. elevation. So okay. elevate your mind, your finance move to the next level of your life. So that's the name. I admire you people. I wish I was that clever when I was young. <laughs> I wasn't that clever. All right, I'd like to give you a challenge. Yep. There is um, some guy from some church. He has decided to invite his congregants over the weekend to go with the new generation notes. Two notes, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> he says, uh, come with the two. He's, he's, I think he's going to pray yes, for yeah, pray for them. So it's an interesting topic, right? Mm -hmm. So the three of you, I want you to pick up on that. You've just come across that poster, and you want to talk about it? Uh, basically, I'd, I'd, for me, I'd feel like it, it feels like much more of a harambe rather than <laughs> him praying for the notes. Okay. Because the Bible also says, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And... Caesar wasn't in the church at mm -hmm. that moment. Caesar was mm -hmm. a politician, uh, a something there. So I feel like maybe he has a hidden agenda, mm -hmm. or maybe he's not gotten a chance to see the notes himself. Okay. So he wants to. <laughs> <see> <laughs> he's not gotten a chance to see the notes. He's telling people to bring the notes for him to see. Yeah. So he can he just go to the nearest shop and ask for a note, and he. Oh, Some people this haven't seen the notes. Man. No offense, he's just a good. That was very offensive. See, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's the three ten. So he's may I think ah, so may I in a, a Kuja in a double. In a Kuja in a double. Kuja in a double. Ah, double. Ah, why is he asking for double? You he's smart. I think we can tell him kudos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can I tell him kudos. No. Like once in Janja, like I mean, like the streets are hard. Guys have to eat. Like I'm eating after Tanzania. I'm not trying to say what he's doing is right. Let me just make that clear. Yeah, just in case people think I'm siding with him. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not siding with, with him in any way. But I feel like. So the two are old notes. I mean, well, are, we, are we really are we really going to be shocked? Like, nah, if you really looked at the church business today, 
that's a conversation for another day. That's a conversation for another day because it's a very sensitive topic. Plus, but, he should know yeah. he, the thunder that's waiting on him is doing press ups and sit ups at the moment. So yeah. when it lands, he has to make sure okay. he is okay. at the right place. What if I go with the old notes? That's Will he not it. take it? If you go with the old notes, you won't take it. I'm sure take. No, I'm sure he'll take it. Si Jafrey lakini next time later is on pia ni bariki. Lakini maybe anataka kuziambia siku hii. Baa baa change. Like you know if you go with the old notes then he will not be able to take them to the bank. Oh. The but I think my guess is a he's a star. He's a genius. He's a genius. Una huyu anataka watu wapande mbegu. Yeah. Double double. Eh. Remarkable people will go. People will go. Is it guaranteeing like a like a is it guaranteeing them like okay, let a pesa I'll foresee your future? Is it that kind of thing? No, everything or? in your life will double up. D- oh. If you have two children, you get four. You get oh. Oh. Or maybe a phone there can be a guy here, pesa in your corner, and in a photocopy, but that you can So basically, you guys are spontaneous. You don't rehearse anything. No. no. Now, you can't have points. Your mind, this is yeah. what you think about. Yeah. You okay. saw Sasha would have clapped back Bobby. Did you feel it? Yeah, yeah, I did. Felt, I, did. Yeah. I did. I did. Yeah, he was waiting did. for Bobby to say one thing. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something about Dominic. People love him for his laugh. They say it, sh- it should be used as a skizzle tune. Yeah, because really. It's really, yeah, it's, it's really something. It's really ugly. I'd say that. Uh, make him laugh. Someone make him laugh. No, <laughs> no please. <laughs> With sound. To be on the safe side. Yeah. 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 But I'd encourage you to watch the videos then. Exactly. So we can see. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we have a few minutes on the clock. We have about 10 minutes to go or about 9 minutes to go. Mm. Yeah. So um before I ask you about your channels and uh, because I'd like people to go and watch you and um from 20,000 perhaps I'll be happy if I see 30,000 subscribers. Yeah, sure. Before uh, I go, what would you want for example Maureen? What would you want people to know who want to come to this space? What would you want them to know? Who want to come yeah, to, to this space? To yes. YouTube. Um I would want them to know that Um, as he said earlier about the hate that you receive, I would want them to know that you're going to receive it, but you can thrive from it, you know. And I mean, if, if Jesus himself had people who hated him, who are you not to go through it? So just be encouraged by the by the letdowns, by the downfalls. Be encouraged by that, and also utilize your block button. Utilize it. You know, just <laughs> block, block all. Block. No, I utilize mine every day. I I think I block about. six people every day <laughs> and, and then you have a ceremony for unblocking them after one year no <laughs> i don't do that i just go through it every one year oh you're oh. still blocked <laughs> wow. oh. nandi mp alfred ketera just texted me and he says he's very impressed by what you guys are doing he just texted oh. me oh. and alfred ita watu wanulie chai pale they can make you happy yeah so okay okay so i uh, have block thrive in your own space thrive don't let anyone bring you down yeah thrive okay. from the negativity and just believe in yourself believe okay. that you're good enough because you are you know and no one can do what you do so okay. just believe in that and even even if there's someone new coming up you can you're still you and you have to believe in that i, I hear about depression all the time i went through that phase i got out of it because you know what you learn that at, a, at the end of the day you have to pull yourself up nothing is going to there's nothing that's going to make you happy you have to Make, you have to create your own happiness mm-hmm. and if being on youtube is what it's going to create it's going to create your happiness you have to go ahead and just pursue it okay yeah. um east um, oh yeah um i'd say just as you have to be resilient about it you have to be ready to work hard it's not easy don't think it's just standing um or sitting in front of a camera and just you have to do a lot a lot of research before we even started it took a whole three months of just doing research understanding the space itself seeing people in the market and what they're doing and finding our niche and by doing that um we were able to reach where we have reached but you also have to understand that it's not going to be easy is there's so many challenges that are going to face you at times um also be smart about it um get legal um advice about it get financial advice right now we're lucky enough to have management um because we used to walk in and small money used to excite us Ooh. someone would just say yo do this for 10,000 <laughs> but another influencer 
has received 200,000. Exactly. So at the end of the day, when you're comparing notes, you're like, oh, you guys were paid 10,000. Oh, and you're okay. And the other person was like, Yo, I received 200,000 for the same thing that you guys did. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it seems, oh, I played myself. Mm -hmm. So also have the right proper structures as you are also entering into the space. And most important, enjoy it. I mm -hmm. genuinely look forward to sitting down with my friends on that Saturday and having the most amount of fun because now we became a family, so we enjoy it. And you never know how many people you impact because, yes, we don't do it for the money as our first motive, but there's always that joy when someone texts you and saying, I had a really bad day, but your videos lit me up. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, so that's find joy in what you do. Okay. Yeah. Sasha? Um, for me, I'd say trust the process. Um, it's never that easy. It takes time. Don't get pulled back by your setbacks. Don't let the setbacks, what's it called, hold you down. Mm -hmm. um, above all, if you're religious, please pray. True. Prayer, prayer keeps you on your feet mm -hmm. at all times. Sometimes you'll feel like it's the end of the world, but if you pray, God will always see you through. And also don't let it go, get to your head too much because sometimes you see the people showing you love and you think, you, you define yourself from the love that people give you and you end up losing yourself in all of it because you, you see that you're bigger than, and better than everyone else. Don't lose yourself. Just always have you. Which, uh, Bobby? Um, for me, biggest thing, have fun. Like, have fun. Like have, have fun after fun. earning or with it? Yeah. Like, During, <laughs> the whole time. Like, the whole time. Yeah. Process, man. Like, okay. yeah. Don't ever let any body determine just have fun go with it that's that's advice i'd go i'd give um the days we, we 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 go through a lot in our personal lives and and then we just come then we just have fun and you just smile and you go home and you feel good so for me i just say have fun that's the mm -hmm. biggest advice I'd I'd, I'd 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 give and um for everyone who wants to join this i think from something that we've all learned as a family together is put god first okay okay put god first, okay yeah. um I want to talk about the next frontier for these people because they need to start thinking ahead, not just doing this. But before I talk about that, she does, um, she creates content on what she does, um, primarily makeup, but she picks a variety of topics. These guys are just people who banter, discuss stuff. Mm -hmm. The other day I saw the one for Matatu, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, obviously there are other people there in Jungush who does comedy, yeah. you know, there's quite a line. Mm -hmm. How limited or how wide can this space be from innovation perspective? Um, actually, it's, it can be as broad as you want it to be. You know, um, how, how, I, I don't even think we've, we have enough influences for all the problems we have in life. Because sure. um, to, today, there's a new different thing happening. Uh, uh, we, we are having mental health as a big issue right now. Mm -hmm. um, imagine starting to discuss such, such a thing. Uh, we have uh, issues with uh, kids in school. That's already a big challenge that you, you really need to talk about. So I think the opportunities are limited. It's, it's for you to pick that that resonates with uh, your, uh, your passion, because then that drives the conversation, because you're passionate about it. You freely, you see, like, like for them, it's, it comes out naturally. Like you don't need, really need to struggle because you are with it. And then as, as, as you go by and as you, you know, uh, start figuring it out, the audience actually tells you what's the next step to move mm -hmm. to. So don't get stuck to what you started. Okay. Actually, the, the reality about Kenyan businesses is that the business you start today will not be the same you have in six years from now. So ask, ask any, most of these business people, what you started today is not the, what the business you started But you'll you still maintain years. the one you started six you years You will, ago. but you'll find that it's really progressed to different things. Why? Mm -hmm. The audience. Because you're the talking to an audience. Yes. That, that audience is telling you, by the way, you know, you need to now move to the next, move to the next, move to the next. What if they're lucky to grow with this generation? They carry this generation with them. And, and that's where now their legacy comes in, because mm -hmm. at a certain point, then you build a newer, gener a, a, a newer set of uh, young-minded people who 
might look at the same idea but totally different. Their perspective is going to be different from what you had. So maybe you, you, you free flow with it. For them, they'll figure out a different perspective, which even for me, I don't know today. But once you build that, then, you know, as they said, it's a legacy. So as you go by, they come with fresh ideas, different perspectives. They continue building it and still attracting that audience that you wanted. Does it worry you? Sometimes I look at the advancement in terms of technology. And I think to myself, what will, what will 2050 look like? For example, if you look at the cars people drive, just yeah. as an example right now, yeah. how advanced they are. Yeah. They park themselves, they drive themselves. You can call it, can give it a name and call it and it will come to you. Have you ever thought of 2050, how technology will be? For sure, it will be totally different. If you watch videos, we'll, uh, your, your phone now that you have looks like, all our phones look like bricks. Uh, 2050 you're told you just have a glass that you know you glance through and all that and you have information you go to a street you walk and tap and you find directions and everything so the future is really uh, something that uh, is going to change as far as technology is concerned but it's for us to look at that opportunity and start thinking about how we can quickly get into that space now so that by the time 2050 comes in We've built businesses around those technologies, but not also not forgetting the social effects as okay. a result of it, okay. that we need to be cognizant of as a society, as a, as a country, and be able to put in a few regulations here and there to ensure that we are not, uh, as we are adopting technology, we are also not creating a very bad uh, so, uh, issues within the society as a result of it. So okay. it's, it's, it's a balance that you need to sort of uh, figure out how to. All right. Yeah. My director has added his time, and she says Maureen has to perform. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, Wait, can I, can I first of all lead with another piece of advice? No problem, absolutely. Yeah. There's something I read somewhere. Um, Steve Harvey said, if you're going to do something, if that's your plan A, don't have a plan B for it. That's it. Don't, don't be like, okay, so what if YouTube fails? I'm going to, I don't know. What do you do if YouTube fails? I, I don't know what people do, but <laughs> if you... figure it out, actually. No, but you're figuring it out because you didn't stick to your plan A. Mm -hmm. So if you stick to your plan A, just believe in that. Don't have a plan B. Don't ever say, if this fails, I'll do this. Believe you won't fail. And you won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What am I supposed to perform? I don't know. Just pick something that you have done that really impressed you. Me? Yes. Oh, you. man. Is that good on date? Time TV. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, try something that is good for daytime TV. <laughs> it was hygiene issues. That's the one that trended. Uh -huh. I was... Um, I, I, I think she was in love with you, Kikuyu. Um, the makeup one. That's I, I not even a hit. Uh -huh. The hit was me. I did a hygiene... I was advising ladies on hygiene issues and how to keep okay. it... <laughs> <laughs> and how to keep it nice and clean and stuff. Uh -huh. And I... And that's what that's what that's where the memes my with my memes the mm -hmm. the ones that they're creating are from that video. So okay. I don't know if I, I don't know I don't want. To, I'm kind of <laughs> shy now because yeah it was sensitive but yeah I didn't think it would. Be, okay yeah. okay just do the makeup one I I think we loved the way oh, you described okay. foundation and eyeshadow and all. Oh no oh so what do I say like I say what I did yes. in the video. Mm -hmm. Okay I wish your I had camera it. is this one yes. Okay yes. So I don't know how to start, but I'll just start. Okay. So you're um what a kwajia kwe haka makeup, no kin your corona mudiki, or corona keruru kya my dono you need direct translation. Keru kya my doni eyeshadow. You do si modu haka woko kanu go my lipstick, you know uge it does that stick woko ko made ko wa kanwaine or wa ogasoka no kinya we hake eyeliner, i do taisio uh, yani we that kadi ni hasani kora wa muhiki wa kwenda kuhenia ni mwanyo no guo ni ne de daga kuhenia ku signa mahida mo so you know that's basically <laughs> what I do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I I barely understood, but I could see the expression yeah. and. Huh? And I could see just the expression. Just watch a video. A thing mm -hmm. you, you can figure it out, you know? Just light it can up and you're like, I can figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but it's so it funny, out. like, you're yeah. like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> but I yeah. show you, in the videos I show you. This okay, one you have also, the makeup kid and all. Yeah, also I do cooking videos. So I cook the, the one I've been asking. Not mashak, excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> I do not cook mashak. I cooked, I uh, showed people how to cook fish and stuff. And I demonstrate so you, uh -huh. you follow up okay. with it. I think yeah. you should do one on mashakura. 
Really? I still think yeah. he did. Try it. Yeah. Try it. It's fun. Bring it. five jerry cans of water. And eat in vernacular. <laughs> for yeah. what? For train. food for seven people. It will trend. Yeah. Why did yeah. you try it? I'll try it. Uh -huh. That's an idea. Thank you, guys. Okay. I'll try it. And, and because it's my brainchild, share oh. the paycheck. <laughs> I'll, I'll tag you. You I'll tag, tag me. You. I'll yes, share it. <laughs> Boron you. Kiswahili, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad. Yeah. All right. So one more. I want you to pick a topic of your own now. Random. Right? The few of you. They can join in and do one more. Banta. Yes. Uh, I think we can do mi mi misconceptions about youth. Yeah. Today's youth. Millennials. Yeah, millennials. Like how we dress. And stuff like that. I think maybe that's one topic. Mm -hmm. What do you okay. think? Yeah. But let's start. Why are we called millennials? Because, because it's our generation. Where does it stop? Yeah. I learned it stopped at 35. Is that real? No. no. Where does it stop? At, it starts from 95. What? I am not a millennial. Yeah, 95 all the way to, I think, 2000. No, somebody oh. said it starts from the 80s. Yeah. Because after that, you have the centennials. No, then there's of generation course. Z. Z. Okay, now that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not joining. 90, 90, I think 94 to, I think 2000, that's millennials. And then after that, then there's now Generation Z. But then, why, why call them millennials? It's because they're experiencing it's different problems that you, you guys have never seen. Such as life. avocado yeah. being yeah. really yeah. expensive. The people know he yeah. <laughs> Do you even understand him what I don't happens think in our generation? Yeah. So what, what really, 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 I don't understand yeah. what happens in your generation. Know. I have a sister who's 19, I do. Ah, <laughs> that's like saying I have a black friend. This is me, you millennials. This is me, you millennials. It has nothing to do with it. Yeah, but so, then, uh, with us, identity, um, appearance means a lot in terms of you can see uh, with Dominic. Don't even, don't even. Uh, with, <laughs> with people would associate it to being rebellious. For instance, uh, my dreads. Most people, um, it's because my mom comes from, uh, my mom is Kikuyu and my dad is Luo. So my mom's side, I have so many, I have 10 relatives who have dreads. I thought Jamaica in there. Ah, <laughs> no, you see. Jamaica, no. <laughs> every, time, every time someone meets me, that's a misconception. Every time someone meets me, they, 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 they are like, are you an artist? Are you a musician? Are you... And do they, they call you Msani? Yeah. They no, called no. me so that. So if you're the musician, what do they call you? The craziest video I've ever done, I think you'd like it, is that I did a makeup challenge. Maybe it's called a cocktail. With, yeah. with, uh, with Wabosha. Maxine, shout out to Wabosha. And um, it was trending. But yeah. we think it was, it was top. It was and I did a full that. face beat. On her or on you? You face me. Oh. And oh. I kid you not, if I were to walk in here, you'd not recognize me 100%. Really? Yeah, because my, my, apparently my eyebrows are like Nike, yeah. no Nike. Upside down. Down. upside down. Yeah, yeah your so, eyebrows, man. You see, even they're right now. Are they artificial? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, people thought he does eyebrows. In the morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't do my eyebrows, man. Uh -huh. So, but so you have to brush them every day in the morning. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, uh, no. <laughs> but when do you think we have a misconception there? Because we, like, for me, for example, yeah, um, my hair. Um, for example, if I have some piercings going on. I have some ink on my body. You find that it means I'm rebellious. You don't want to know if I have, I can think more. But that is the misconception within the millennials? Within or does within it go outside? Outside. 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 outside millennials. Don't talk about me like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> outside within, within. I think because I can figure it out. I think it's that the millennials are, like for example, him accepting to do a makeup challenge, he's more, he's, secure in his masculinity yeah. and he doesn't think it'll take away from anything else yeah. okay. but someone else imagine telling someone me putting makeup on you would you i i would no yeah. you wouldn't would you would you, really? would you bro it was, just because it was, i don't have it now it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a full yeah. face yeah. beat do you, how, how old do you know i have i have nieces and nephews who called me one time methusela do you know what that means? Yeah, uh, oh, salad, no. They think I'm that old. I'm not that old. <laughs> it's for example, if I was walking into an office, walked into an office, and um, he walks into an office, mm -hmm. same job. Probably have more qualification. Depending if you work at, at Microsoft or at Facebook, no, they'll give you a job. The difference, yeah. But yeah. In now, if for example, okay, Parliament. Let's go to Parliament. You're not working, so let's yeah. Let's <laughs> do that. Let's exactly. pick, uh, yes. It's because of perception. Yes, because I perceive you because of my generation. Yeah. They mm -hmm. assume that 
um, if if I have this hair, mm -hmm. if I have the piercings, if I have the, the rings, or if I wear this kind of style, okay. it means I don't have more to say. All right. That I'd be my thinking is limited. Yeah. And if I were to tell okay. you, for example, if where where I'm schooling, if I were to tell you that I was in government, you'd think it's a joke. If I were to tell you uh, all that kind of stuff, you'd think no, 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 he doesn't look like that. But if someone with a suit and a tie told you, you'd be like, wow. Exactly. Yeah, for real. For real. See, so for and, real. and let's take it back to art as a form of expression. Mm -hmm. And we have music for our generation, um, ethic. Your generation looks at that music as rubbish. Don't make that reference again. No, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the older generation would look at it as rubbish, um, as what are these kids trying to say. But for us, music is all about the vibe. It's all about how it makes you feel. If at the moment, I'm not listening... They're different. That's why there's a variety of music. If I want to listen to something nice, chill, relax, I'm going to go to Saudi Soul. If I'm out with my friends, I want my spirits to be up, I'm going to go ethic. listen to Ethic. Yeah. You see, but not because of the message. And you see, it's the reality of the surrounding of um, where people have come from that also drives that type of content. Okay. You see, so for you, uh, for most people, for the older generation, <laughs> you have dirty laundry, but y'all will pretend as if you're holier than that. Okay. But us people are just willing to show you, this is what we do. But let's see. So if, don't hide. if, now, how do, you, how do you then adapt into this misconception? Because that's the key, key thing to understand. Because today you are chasing a deal. Let's say seven figure mm -hmm. deal. And you know on the other side you're going to eat, meet your typical misconception type of people. Mm -hmm. How to do it? The manager do comes you, in, I think. I think you, that's how your you manager comes in. And tell Dominic, hey, by the way, remove your stats and everything, no. go clean up your hair. No. Or no. do you walk into the room and just say, we are who Straight we are? Face. We are exactly. Exactly. Straight face. Straight face. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, we're who uh, we are. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, it's all about it's all about us. Okay. Youth, all of us. You know, it, it, unfortunately, yes, there are some, unfortunately, amongst the youth, there are some of us who this style is identified with as wrong. Yeah. It's, it, it's used in some forms to express the wrong okay. things. But at the same time, that's not all of us. Great, great, great. And what did you say? Ethic is a form of music or a person? No. Okay, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, give us your YouTube channel. I want to let you go because you have to go as, and then you're parting shot. Okay. Just as we leave, yes. Yeah, my YouTube channel is actually my name, Maureen Mohir, and my parting shot is just always try and be authentic in everything that you do. All right. Um, Bobby, you uh, look like, uh, but uh, not my pesa. Rastafari, <laughs> Rastafari. Uh, you can find us on East Mitsuas 254. Mm -hmm. um, our parting shot is. Fun. No, yours. They have oh, to give. Mine yes. is God above everything. Mm, yeah. God above yes, all. God above everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Sasha. Um, yeah, she said the name of our channel. So for me, it's believe in yourself. All right. Yes. Say hi to Malia when you go back. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, my, your, um, the parting shot would be self love. Self love. Yeah. Self love will, to, to, will lead to greatness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you should meet Jeff Koinange and do that thing you do with your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> he does that a lot. Oh, for real? <laughs> yes. It you go meet him, happen. then he competes. It should happen. It should yeah. happen. It I have no competition. I yeah. challenge. <laughs> okay. And okay. finally? Uh, for me, it's um, uh, nothing comes easy. So wake up, pray, go and walk your way up and repeat. Repeat. Yes. Yeah. Repeat mode. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Thank much you for coming. Tell me your nice videos. I like to share and support you. Make okay. them pay you, but I'll share, right? Uh, okay. And I have Thank quite you. some following, so yeah. I'll share to support you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very so much, much for coming and sharing your perspective. And I bet they know there's money online. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thanks for coming. And uh, time now to cross over to County Hall, where CS Mashari is currently before the committee chaired by uh, the Kambu Senator, Homatangi. We'll leave you with that. I know you do not want to engage the chair in a contest as to <laughs> whether they were right or wrong. Uh, and then what would have to follow is uh, I would have then to put them, each one of them uh, that you may have sent on their own defense as to whether uh, or not they appeared. And then they can carry the, 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 the blame. And if you say so, then I could also, with my team here, decide. Because parliament needs some funds, we could find them. And the fine, we've had you. The issues that this committee wanted to deal with when we invited you were issues arising from one petitions that have been brought to this committee. 
those petitions have been brought by members of, of the public who, under our constitution, have not only the right and force of law to have justice and their rights upheld in the course of the works that are done by government, and those matters being matters of grave concern were the ones then, in the absence of adequate answers, then resulted in us compelling your attendance. Some of the matters, for purposes then of dispensing of that requirement of the Powers and Privileges Act, is uh, to confirm then that indeed, now that you have appeared, you have appeared with sufficient evidence and uh, responses so that we can put to rest the matters that were raised by these members. Uh, to begin with, first number one, uh, CS, we have uh, the petition from members of the public from uh, the Road A104 that brought about this uh, summons on compensation. We have matters of um, whether the compensation was, was, was fair. We have matters of inflation of the compensation and delay. And we have matters of environmental pollution leading to one, death of livestock around those areas, two, uh, endanger, endangerment of the lives of children, families, around the site constructed on that road. And those were grave matters that must be responded to. So to give you now an audience to be on record, Cabinet Secretary, in line with Article 125, I will request the clerk as you then table that evidence to put you under oath and you table the evidence that you have. Subsequently, uh, the CEO, National Land Commission, because we do not want to come back again to you, you'll also table all the documents you have, but you'll also be put under oath. The other officers who have documents to table, take this opportunity to table all of them, then now we can have a quick process. So, okay. I, James Masharia, do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before this committee in respect of the matters before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Uh, CS, I would be, it would be neat if then at the same time we can finish with any documentation you may have wanted to present to the committee that can be tabled now so that we don't have to come back to you, we can deal with it. You may hand over the documents to table to the CS, then he will table them. Yes, if you are under the CS, you are a CEO, you are a DG, why don't you hand over the documents because they are all under. We are not going to take all the second time. So, clerk, you can take over the documents. Uh, the first document I have is um, a document indicating the upgrading of Kainu Bridge and Rocky Cha uh, and the emergency maintenance of Rodwa Karoko Road, Rocky Cha Amosing, and giving the project status. I think that's it. Uh, Honorable Chair, I also table a very detailed report uh, regarding uh, the Edward Bypass uh, because when I go through it, I'll go through it in summary. So for the sake of the record, I'll give a detailed report 
which can be tabled now and for the record. Right, so let's try and get you back to County Hall where the CS is uh, currently uh, before the Matangi Committee. And this regards uh, the compensation um, about the SGR that has been disputed and has a lot of issues, including issues in court. We'll try and get back to County Hall as soon as we have that signal back. But let's take you live now to the Safaricom Sports Centre that's in Kasarani, where President Uhuru Kenyatta was expected earlier, and we are told that uh, the President has now arrived. And uh, let's, let's just take you there and listen in. As we remain standing, Pius Meto will lead us in a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts, Jehovah Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, as we gather here as a nation uh, for this great event as we walk towards bring us, uh, bring back Savari Rally, Jehovah Lord, into the world. Uh, again, we pray, Jehovah Father, that you bless us. All right, we also have a challenge with our connection at Kasarani, but uh, CS Masharia is appearing before Senate Transport Committee to talk about the SGR compensation, and we'll try and get that signal as soon as it's back up. We'll try and get you inside County Hall to understand what exactly is happening. But the payments, the SGR compensation, the payments along the SGR line has been a hot issue, and including heading into court, and we have a number of people in court, including former NLC Chair Mohamed Swazuri, who's in court regarding those compensations. So as soon as we have that signal, we'll try and get you there. But we're covering important stories for you on this day, including the fact that President Uhuru Kenyatta, straight after Kasarani, is headed to Tanzania to meet uh, his counterpart in Tanzania, President uh, Magufuli, and they are likely to discuss issues regarding around uh, uh, bilateral relations between Kenya and uh, Tanzania. And uh, they are going to talk also about the remarks that have landed Starehe legislator into or in court. They are likely to talk about that. But it's said to be a private meeting. Aside from that, it's 50 years since Tomboya was assassinated along government road. And that's the story we're covering up for you. There's a lot of activities lined up by several uh, organizations and societies, civil societies. So we'll try and get you all those stories. Aside from that, we have other stories we're following up for you from court and from the specific counties, including Mombasa, where we're supposed to have Kevin Mutai earlier, but we are unable to have it. All right, uh, it's a few minutes to the top of the hour. NTV Sasa is coming up shortly. Stay with us and stay with NTV. NTV Sasa will be on air shortly. My name is Ken Mijungu. Have a good morning.